Hey, up next on the Mar Army Rock Show, you know, we pride ourselves in finding the best new music all around the country, and sometimes it's kind of close by. Uh, we're out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, but down in Annapolis, Maryland, we find Signal 13, who has brand new music out. And uh, we want to welcome Vicki Starr, their vocalist, to the show. Vicki, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Rocky. Glad to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to talk to you, and we were just talking off air, you know, full disclosure to the listeners, man, we've been buddies with your drummer, Johnny, for more than a decade now, I don't even know how long it's been, but um, for folks that don't know your band that well yet, give us a little of the history of Signal 13. Well, Signal 13, we started out as a cover project, because it's the chicken or the egg, about getting fans and releasing music, and then over the last two and a half years, we evolved to be a original project began writing we got the lineup straight and then the current members of the band john lasseter who's the lead guitar player johnny sex who's the drummer pat jenkins our bass player chris Starr, the rhythm guitar player and i have been working um on the original music since last september and then released it on april 17th the C, uh, EP is called Destination Unknown, and the first single released digitally is Dirty. So I'm going to ask you about Dirty in a minute, but uh, you know, I almost never, I have like a poly, I almost never ask bands about where they got their name, but I'm going to make an exception for you guys because I think it's kind of important. So uh, tell us a little bit about the name of your band. Well, the history of, this, um, of all of us is our families, members, um, and friends all are either in the military, law enforcement, or emergency responders. And Signal 13 means officer in trouble. So we decided to name the band Signal 13 to honor all of those um, different people with that name. And uh, like I said, I never asked bands that question hardly, but I thought it was, I was taken by it with your guys. I think it's an awesome uh, tribute to all those people. So kudos to you guys for picking such a cool name. Um, hey, tell us a little bit about the new single, first of all. Um, and I'm going to ask about the video in a minute, but tell us a little bit about the tune. How long has it been kicking around? And tell us about the writing of that song. Uh, so Dirty, we started writing Dirty um, in October of last year. I actually was asleep and started singing it, got up in the middle of the night, wrote it, called John at 7.30 in the morning, and I said, you got to hear this, and I sang it to him, and he goes, I feel it, I hear it. And then Pat started listening to it the way I sang it. We went to the studio that weekend and created that song. Um, it was released on April 17th, um, right now with... Um, the video, we have over 35,000 views now up on YouTube, on Spotify, we have 22,000 listeners, and we just got added to the Guitar Hero Spotify playlist yesterday. So, what does that mean for folks? So, does that mean, like, you know, folks can actually go out if they're playing guitar here now and, like, jam with your music, I guess, right? That's the significance of that? Yes, that is the significance of it. You can listen to it with all the other... Um, big bands in that Guitar Hero playlist and play along with it. So for people listening, that and I'm going to air the tune tonight, but for folks that kind of are just kind of getting a vibe for who you guys are, how do you describe your genre of music? Because I know you guys take a lot of pride in, in what your genre kind of is, I think. Well, we consider us a contemporary rock band. We love the way the 80s music felt. It made everybody feel good, feel happy, and then we added a modern sound to it. And that's how we tend to um, focus our music at this point. So there's a music video out, as you alluded to, for Dirty. Why don't you give us a little bit of the story behind the making of that video and what that process was like? Well, we started um, kicking around ideas for Dirty because Dirty originally was about hardworking people. And we took it back to Baltimore, and the biggest industry there was Bethlehem Steel, Lever yeah. Brothers, and General Motors. So we wanted to find some place for all the hardworking blue-collar people that worked in all those areas, and we found a pipe bending facility that is still functioning that has been around since 1860s. Wow. So that's where we filmed that video in honor of all those people. All of us come from blue-collar backgrounds, our families, so we wanted to make sure that we focused on that. Dirty then evolved into a little bit of um, sex appeal with it, and, process, and we just processed it through, and now you got the song out there. 
So, um, hey, as summer, you know, approaches, one of the things I noticed, I was looking through your guys' schedule, and who knows what's going to happen with gigs right now, but it's kind of interesting. I noticed you guys play, like, a lot of, like, uh, beach bars and dock parties. It seems to be around the waterfront a lot. Is that just because you're from Annapolis, or is that kind of a genre or a group of people that have gathered to that kind of venue for you? Well, we like to go to the beach ourselves, <laughs> and we started Baltimore out. people, right? Baltimore and, people. <laughs> and we um, we started looking at what kind of places have people that like rock music, and we found a lot of places in beach bars that like to go out on their boats and party all weekend, and that's where we tend to hang out in the summertime because nobody's in bars back at home or in clubs. They're at the beach or on vacation. So we wanted to go where the people were, and that's how we did that. Yeah, and for folks listening around the world, this part of the country where they're at, summers in the Annapolis and the Baltimore area, that is the thing, man. You go eat crabs, you hang around the dock bars, and uh, that's a great niche for, for bands such as yourself in the summer, this region of the world. So, um, hey, so tell us, you know, I've been asking bands this. I don't want to make it a down thing, but like, uh, so how are you guys weathering the whole coronavirus thing? I mean, it's kind of tough. The album drops, you get excited, and then this hits. So how are you guys weathering everything? Well, we decided that we were going to still drop this album when we did in the midst of the coronavirus because a lot of people are staying home and are bored and they needed something to do, they needed something to watch, and needed something to listen to. We were going to go out on tour with Tesla and Slaughter and LA Guns. That all got postponed to the fall. It, all the virus is under control and we have been practicing virtually so we can keep our safe distances away from people and trying to keep our music going. We're writing new songs and material, practicing virtually. That's what we've been doing. Now, you just kind of threw that in there, kind of matter of fact, but that's a pretty big deal there. About to go on tour with Tesla, Slaughter, and LA Guns. Tell us a little bit more about uh, how that all came together. I mean, I know it, maybe it'll still happen when things like you know calm down. Who knows? We um, hired a publisher and our manager, Davidson, is our manager, our publisher, Chip Ruggieri, and we gave them our raw tracks before they had been finished, mastered, or anything. This was just raw material. And they gave it to the different managers for them to listen to, and they selected us to go be one of the opening bands for them. That's how that came about. Wow, that's, I mean, it, it seems, you know, it, it's got to be a real testament to your guys' music because it doesn't seem, I mean, how many must, submissions must they get to go on that tour? So I guess you guys were pretty happy to get that gig. We were very thrilled about that. The thing that was the most, you know, exhilarating is they heard a raw track. This wasn't a finished track. And they heard a raw track on, as a demo, and they liked the music enough to select us to be with them. So, um, hey, give me a little bit of your background as a vocalist. Do you come straight up through the ranks of rock and roll singing, or do you have some other genre that might surprise us that you started with? Uh, what's your history as a vocalist? Well, I always have sang rock. Um, then I had um, a family. We went to church, and I started singing that way, and then I decided as they got a little bit bigger to go back and start singing music again in the rock world. So you've always and pretty much been a rock vocalist then, for the most part, it sounds like. Pretty much. Um, in the cover project, you got to do a lot more different avenues. you got to do some dance tunes. We do some country. and But we always add a rock edge to it. I don't think people knew that some of these songs were actually country songs the way we do them. <laughs> <laughs> do, you have a good, do you have a specific example, one that jumps out, uh, that you guys used to cover? Um, Jason Aldean. We used to cover a lot of his music, and we do uh, Drop D and just let the guitars on it and the bass and just completely had a good time with it. <laughs> 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 well, um, nobody knew that I was chasing all day by the time we got talking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not the first time I've heard of that. I've, I've watched a couple bands before and heard a song that I thought I liked and realized it was a country tune. So that is a thing these days and uh, interesting. But um, so uh, Vicki Starr, man, she's from Signal 13 of Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, Vicki, where is the, first of all, where can folks go to get the CD? Because I think it's just a hard copy right now. Is that correct? Correct. We've only released um, Dirty on digital release, but you can go up to www.signal13band.com and get the CD. All five songs are up there. 
And the other question I've been asking bands with the whole Corona shutdown thing is, what is the thing we can do to help you as fans the most right now? Is it streaming you on Spotify? Is it buying the CD? What's the thing that gets you guys the most uh, recognition these days in this environment? No, all of it. We know people have limited amounts of money. So anything they can do, even if it's watching our video to give us a like, give us a like up on Facebook, you know, stream us. If they have extra money and they want to buy the whole album, that'd be great. But we're just trying to keep our music to keep people out there and have help them be happy at this time. Well, uh, hey, Vicki, I've had a good time talking to you. Once again, there's Signal 13 from Annapolis, Maryland. You can pick up their uh, single Dirty right now on digital. And as, as mentioned, you can go to the uh, the web store there and get the whole CD physically if you would like to do that. And, uh, hey, Vicki, good talking to you. I hope we get to see you at a show, maybe one of those nice summer dockside shows in the very near, near future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rocky, for having us here. Thank you.